All right, look, I'll get started. Thanks for coming everyone. So, uh, my name is Paul Coddington. I'm the uh, associate director for the research cloud and storage at the Australian research data commons or the ARDC. So I'm responsible for the, um, the nectar research cloud. So I'm going to talk to you today about, um, the nectar research cloud. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or wait till the end and, uh, we'll, we'll ask the questions at the end. So, let's go. So just initially, uh, welcome to acknowledge the, uh, and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and pay our respects to the elders, uh, past and present. All right, I'm just going to very briefly give you some context for the Nectar Research Cloud. The, uh, the Nectar project started about 10 years ago, uh, with the aim as, as its name implies of providing tools and resources, e-research tools and resources for research collaboration to support research collaboration. So it, it had two components, one of which was a national research cloud, which at the time was quite innovative. There was, uh, you know, re cloud was a, was a quite new thing. There were actually no commercial cloud infrastructure within Australia at the time when the research cloud was started. Uh, and the idea was just to provide, a, a, you know, an efficient and simple way for, for providing um, compute and storage resources in a self-service way to researchers to allow collaboration beyond institutional firewalls, for example, to make that easy. And the second part of the Nectar project was what was called the Virtual Laboratories Program to allow uh, the development or support the development of domain-oriented online environments, many of which uh, were hosted on the research cloud. So um, the Nectar project became a, a, an NCRIS uh, facility, uh, the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. The 2016 National Research Infrastructure Roadmap for NCRIS um, called for the merger of three uh, existing projects, the NECTAR, the Research Data Storage, or RDSI, and the ANS project. Uh, so that happened, and ARDC, the Australian Research Commons, was, was born in 2018. So ARDC now supports the Nectar Research Cloud through its storage and compute theme. And it also continues to support the, the idea of virtual laboratories through its platforms program. And the ARDC is part of a broader nationally supported e-research um, uh, group called the wonderful acronym DDERP uh, that includes NCI, PAWSI, RNET and AAF to provide nationally coordinated e-research infrastructure. Okay, so what is the uh, Nectar Research Cloud? So it's, uh, the, the main uh, concept around the Nectar Research Cloud is that it's a federated model of providing um, uh, cloud infrastructure. So it's a partnership between a number of institutions and research organisations who uh, cooperate to provide a federated cloud, national cloud infrastructure using open source um, tools and technologies. So in this case, OpenStack, which is essentially the, the de facto standard for open source provision of, of uh, research cloud. So we have a number of um, partners that uh, cooperate to provide an open, a national OpenStack research cloud. So essentially the, the, the Nectar cloud is, it kind of has some, you know, sort of standout unique features. It is a national federated research cloud that requires having national standards around cloud computing and cloud uh, the way it's operated. So all the different uh, organizations that contribute to the cloud can do that in a standardized way. Researchers can see a standard interface, standard APIs, standard policies and processes across all the different um, uh, partner institutions that make up the cloud. Um, we wanted to make it easy access so people can just log in using their institutional user account through the Australian Access Federation, AAF. Uh, it's a self-service model. It's open source. We can tweak things how we like. We, it's specifically customized for research use. We provide um, expert user support at both the national level through the ARDC and at the uh, local, uh, or what we call the nodes of the cloud, the node uh, level. The, the partners that provide the federated um, cloud infrastructure. And in, in particular, it's a very cost effective way of providing cloud infrastructure in a federated way and leverages co investment from our partners, which uh, NCRIS wants. <coughs> 
So although it's a federated model made up of infrastructure at different sites, it looks to the user as a single national cloud. Uh, there's a web dashboard and standard API. Um, some of the sites or the nodes at the, in the cloud have uh, national infrastructure that's funded by ARDC for national use, nationally prioritized allocations. Some also provide their own locally funded infrastructure for their own that's prioritized for their local users, and many of them provide both. <coughs> so a user can ask for infrastructure at a particular site or a particular node of the cloud, or they can just say, I don't care, I just please run my VM wherever, and, and the system will do that. <coughs> so it's the operation of the cloud is similarly federated. There's a central um, team within ARDC, our, what we call our core services team that runs the central core services for the cloud. So some examples there, the dashboard, the standard APIs, authentication, uh, image repository. There's an app store that makes it easier to deploy certain applications on the cloud. So there's a number of sort of standard centralized things that are required to operate the cloud that ARDC runs. And then there's the sort of federated services that may that are supported by our node partners and, and the ARDC. And in particular, all the infrastructure, all the actual hardware, the compute, the volume storage, the object storage is all hosted at our partner sites. Um, so in, in the brackets here, you can see the, the terms, the OpenStack projects or the OpenStack um, components that make up the, the dashboard, the authentication mechanism, the compute, the volume, etc. Um, there's also a number of more advanced uh, OpenStack features, so things like advanced networking and load balancing that allow uh, projects to set up uh, a sort of high availability services that might cut across multiple uh, virtual machines or even multiple nodes and multiple sites uh, if you want to run a, a high availability service in the cloud. Uh, pro, um, um, services like Kubernetes through the OpenStack um, Magnum. Uh, we're just trialing now um, preemptible or spot instances in the cloud. So there are a number of these higher level services that the cloud also provides. And of course, we also provide user support, help desk, tutorials, training in collaboration with our partners. So how do you use the, the Nectar Cloud? So basically the cloud can be used by anyone uh, that has a AAF account. <laughs> so you can just log into the Nectar Research Cloud dashboard and you automatically have your account set up and you're ready to go. We, you, you tick the terms of use uh, once when you first log in or whenever it changes, which it has done recently. Um, and you get an automatically get a small amount of resource as what we call a project trial and you can just start using it straight to try it out. Um, if you want a longer term or larger um, amount of infrastructure, you have to apply for it. So you submit a, you fill in a form, essentially an online form in the dashboard. You ask for a project allocation, which can be three, six or 12 months. Um, and then those project allocations get reviewed. There's a bunch of criteria for what we say yes to um, by an allocation committee. So we aim to uh, assess and make uh, um, decisions on those within a couple of weeks. And users can request an update, you know, ask for more, ask for less, ask for an extension of time at any time they like. Um, there's no direct cost to researcher. Obviously it's not free, someone is paying for it, but um, the, it, it is ARDC that typically covers the capital expenditure, at least for the nationally prioritized uh, allocations and our nodes that cover the operational expenditure. Um, so there is typically no direct cost to researcher for using the, the research cloud. So uh, one dis important distinction here is there's two types of categories for cloud infrastructure and cloud project allocations, what we call national and local. So the national infrastructure is the infrastructure that's funded by ARDC through its increased funding. Um, and it's accessible for nationally prioritized um, projects. Um, as I said, nodes also um, add their own infrastructure that they pay for, and obviously they get to decide how that is, uh, is allocated. So projects are eligible for a national allocation to use the ARDC funded infrastructure if they meet essentially three criteria. 
they have a national competitive research grant like an ARC or MH and MRC grant. They are supported by or they are part of an INCRIS facility. So that obviously includes ARDC, we're an INCRIS facility. So if you have a project that is funded by ARDC, you are eligible for automatically for a national allocation. Um, for the lifetime of that project funding from ARDC. Now, we, we don't guarantee this, but we certainly, our aim is to continue to support those projects once their ARDC funding finishes. So if, for example, you're a platforms project that's getting funded for two or three years for ARDC to develop a, or improve a, a platform, um, we'll certainly um, give you a national allocation to support that if you want one in the NACTA Research Cloud, but once the project finishes and ARDC funding finishes, you're still providing an important national service, hopefully, uh, important national uh, platform. So we aim to continue to support you uh, on the Nectar Research Cloud with a national allocation um, beyond that time as well. And certainly we are currently doing that with a number of projects that were funded by Nectar to the, for example, to develop virtual laboratories and are still operating those virtual laboratories as national um, platforms. There is a third sort of catch-all category with a number of criteria where there may be other reasons why we might not support national allocations. So you can get uh, national allocations in certain circumstances if you don't meet the first two criteria. Now, if you're not eligible for a national allocation, if your project isn't, um, so it doesn't have a national research grant, for example, uh, you, you could still, if you're, if you're associated with a, one of the nodes of the Nectar Research Cloud, they may provide you with a um, um, a local allocation, but you need that arrangement with a node to do that. Okay, so the cloud has been around for quite some time um, and we have a lot of users. So we have approximately uh, or more than 1700 research projects using the cloud at the moment. Um, at any given time, there are more than uh, seven and a half thousand virtual machines running in the Nectar Research Cloud. Uh, it supports hundreds of um, services that are hosted on the cloud, and we estimate with uh, more than 50,000 users of those services, both in Australia and, and worldwide. And there's some examples there of some of the larger users of the cloud. There's a number of increase facilities, there's a number of virtual labs or, or platforms. Um, now, not all of these just use the Nectar Cloud. Some of them may use commercial cloud or other infrastructure. Um, in addition to using the Nectar Cloud, some of them solely use the Nectar Research Cloud for uh, hosting and operating their service. Um, so just a bit more of a drill down into some of those things. At any given time, we have over 50,000 virtual CPUs uh, running on the Nectar Cloud being used, four petabytes of storage, um, and about 2,000 users who are running those um, virtual machines uh, on the cloud at any given time. And last year in total, about three and a half thousand people actually fired up virtual machines in the research cloud. Now it's hard for us to figure out how many people are actually using those things. So we could, you know, common circumstance, for example, is a person in a research group will fire up virtual machines and several people in that group might use them. We can't easily track those. Uh, and of course, you know, virtual labs, platforms, increased capabilities are running services that may have hundreds or thousands of users as well. Um, we've had 18,000, more than 18,000 registered users in the cloud since it started in 2012. Uh, we get about 200 new users signing up every month. We've supported over 4,000 projects since the cloud started. And as I said, there's, a, there's more than 1,700 that are currently active. We supported over 700 research grants just last year. Um, and a number of virtual labs, cooperative research centers, centers of excellence and so on um, since the cloud's been running. So just briefly, in terms of the strategy of the cloud, because it has changed a little bit since ARDC um, took over running the cloud. Um, first of all, ARDC is committed to continue to support the Nectar Research Cloud. We have spent four and a half million dollars to refresh the infrastructure at the sites and we've committed to spending $3 million a year for at least the next um, couple of years um, to for additional infrastructure and development of services in the cloud. 
Uh, in the past, the Nectar really was just a basic infrastructure as a service cloud, but the strategy with ARDC is to expand that to provide um, higher level services, sort of platform as a service offerings as well, um, and also to prioritize ARDC um, uh, activities. So particularly ARDC funded projects like platforms projects, for example. And also to prioritize the sort of more innovative leading edge infrastructure, things like GPU servers, very large memory servers, other, other types of um, services and functionality as well. Um, so part of that is developing national, excuse me, national um, services. So for example, supporting containers and Kubernetes, we've started a, a coordinating a national collaborative project to do that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and standard approaches to supporting analytics platforms like Jupyter, for example. Um, we're also partnering to develop approaches for um, supporting commercial cloud. Again, I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, try, and also trying to make the uh, expertise that we have within our core services team um, available externally for you know, consulting or, or, or assistance in, in uh, particularly ARDC supported projects. And we try as much as we can to align with what's happening internationally. So for example, in the European Open Science Cloud, they have a, an EGI Cloud Federation, uh, again, a, a federated open stack model similar to what we're doing in Australia, but a much larger scale, obviously. So I'll just briefly step through some of those things I just talked about. So first of all, the I mentioned we were um, spending money on refreshing the cloud. One of the problems with the research cloud over the last few years is we haven't had um, significant funding to refresh the old infrastructure, but we do now. So um, the central services infrastructure has already been refreshed, um, much of it and, and more to come later this year. Uh, the, the nodes are all having refreshed cloud infrastructure. So Uni Melbourne node, that's already happened. The Tasmanian node, the infrastructure is in place. There's just testing happening now. That should be uh, available within the next couple of weeks. Similarly, the Monash node, uh, some of the infrastructure is already, new infrastructure is already up and running. The rest will be in the next week or two, should be available. And the New South Wales and Queensland nodes will have new infrastructure coming online in the middle of the year. So once that's all done, uh, the capacity in the research cloud uh, for national allocation will almost double and we'll be able to support uh, you know, at least 42,000 virtual CPUs and a significant increase in storage as well. Uh, but there's more. So um, that's just refreshing the existing capacity. We are also, as I said, spending $3 million a year for, the, for this year and the next couple of years on providing more infrastructure and new services. As I said, the, the aim there is to prioritise support for ARDC uh, funded projects like the platforms project. So this year we're prioritizing uh, the 2019 platforms projects. So for example, the ones that were already using the Nectar Cloud and been around for a while, the BioCommons, uh, uh, Galaxy Australia, EcoCommons, the characterization virtual lab, and a number of new ones, the drones, platform, imaging, machine learning, and so on. So uh, a number of these, as won't be surprising, is the imaging characterization machine learning platforms need uh, lots of GPUs. And some of these need uh, high-end uh, infrastructure, large memory machines and so on. So that's been primarily the focus of the um, new infrastructure that we're funding for this year. Uh, lots of GPUs, um, a number of uh, very large memory servers and some just generic additional capacity for compute and storage to meet the requirements of all these um, new platforms. This new infrastructure should all be deployed by the, again, roughly the middle of the year, June, July this year. And we have more uh, to come in the next couple of financial years. If you're part of a 2020 platforms project, you'll be aware we started gathering your storage and compute requirements already through a survey. We'll have follow-up meetings shortly to see how we can uh, potentially assist you with providing the uh, infrastructure that you need for your project. Um, I'll just briefly go through some of these. The, so the GPUs, as I said, initially we're aiming to, we, we do already have some GPUs in the Nectar Research Cloud, 
but it's typically it's not offered as a national service it's like some nodes have gpus that they might provide to some of their local users uh the current <clears throat> round of infrastructure is essentially just to provide gpus that are dedicated to particular platforms so you can access them through those platforms through the machine learning platform for example or the characterization platform um Next year, uh, next financial year, we are looking to expand that to provide a more generic um, infrastructure as a service using GPUs that can be used by any any project. Uh, we'll be able to apply for uh, uh, the use of GPUs and and be able to reserve some some capacity. And we've also implemented uh, the ability to virtualize GPUs. So some of the higher end um, GPU cards could be. Um, sort of sliced into into smaller, more digestible chunks, I suppose. Um, the other project we're working on at the moment there is, is to essentially just to try and make um, the cloud easier for people to use. So the to provide virtual desktop infrastructure so people can log into the cloud just like it's a virtual desktop that just has a bit more capacity. And of course, there's been a huge uptake in things like Jupyter and R Studio for, for data analysis. And we, you know, people can and do run Jupyter and, and R Studio on the cloud, but we just want to make it a lot easier for people to do that with simple web interface, for example. Some of the platforms projects already do that. Um, we want to provide this as a generic, um, gen sorry, it's a general service that can be used by anyone, including platforms projects, if they want to incorporate say a Jupyter Hub service or virtual desktop infrastructure into their platform. So we've been working with some of the, uh, we have, uh, are working with some of the projects, particularly the EcoCommons project on um, does essentially tweaking what they've already done to be able to, for ARDC to support that. So we're looking to have a pilot for that sort of middle of the ish of the year uh, with a production service for both virtual desktop and Jupyter um, by the end of the year. Um, I mentioned briefly containers and Kubernetes. So these containers on the cloud and Kubernetes for container orchestration has been growing rapidly. So we are looking to provide a, a sort of national coordination of support for containers and, and Kubernetes across the various e-research platforms in Australia, not just the Nectar Research Cloud, but you know, NCI's cloud, Pawsey, local infrastructure and so on commercial cloud as well. So to allow people to be able to containerize applications and run it on different platforms or different uh, clouds. So we've set up uh, the Arcos project, Australian Research Container Orchestration Service. This is ARDC is coordinating this, but it's a national collaboration of pretty much the main uh, e-research providers in the country. Um, we've set up a working group. Please join if you're interested in uh, using containers or Kubernetes and a couple of uh, specific working groups around the technical uh, issues and around uh, container registries and things like that. So we've been gathering requirements for projects and e-research infrastructure providers and uh, working on implementing solutions to provide a, a more sort of standardized approach for how we do this um, nationally and how we support this. So please feel free to join these, uh, these things if you're interested or you want help. Um, the other thing we would like to be able to do, um, we've been thinking about this for quite some time, but we still haven't quite come up with a uh, approach for doing this, is, um, is obviously the, the cloud is great for lots of things, the research cloud, sorry, but commercial cloud is also great for lots of things and, and can provide things that we can't, right? So people do use the commercial cloud as well as or instead of the Nectar Research Cloud, there's a lot of advantages for some um, use cases for using the commercial cloud. So we want to be able to make it easier for people to do both. So we've been exploring approaches for how we do that. Um, we're still figuring that out. We're hoping to have uh, a sort of a, a, a focus on that in the next financial year as part of our plan um, for how to do that. So if you have interest, so we can't currently easily support people who want to use the research cloud because we don't have finalized strategy for how we're going to do that. But the hope is we will have that um, within the next year. So please talk to us if you're interested or have particular use cases around that. Um, and just finishing up, so we have some time for questions. Um, 
just to let you know, if you are engaging with the Nectar Cloud, just some of the people involved. So Carmel Walsh is uh, is my boss. She's the, the Director of E-Research Infrastructure and Services in ARDC, uh, which encompasses both the Nectar Cloud and the Data Retention Project. So I'm responsible for the Nectar Research Cloud. Um, Joe Morris is the User Support Manager for the Cloud. Uh, Sengor is starting on Monday, so he's our new Cloud Services Development and Operations Manager, replacing Wilfred Brimblecombe, who some of you may know, who were retired at the end of last year. Um, Sam and Andy are our technical leads in the Cloud and have a lot of experience in OpenStack. Um, Kieran is the uh, Arcos technical lead around Kubernetes and containers. Uh, the rest of the core services team, uh, Adrian, Jake, Jacob, Stephen, Rocky, uh, most of them are located, most of the core services team are located in Melbourne. Um, some of us are in Brisbane, I'm in Adelaide, so it's a pretty distributed team just within ARDC. But then we also have the node operators uh, at the different um, node sites around the country and their support staff who uh, also help um, organisations and projects that are using the, the Nectar Cloud. Um, we're just recruiting a, a cloud skills specialist to ramp up the focus on skills and training within the, the research cloud. And uh, we have an, uh, a distributed help desk, which is, which is staffed by, um, by node staff or, or around the country. So uh, more information on how to use the cloud, you can go to the ARDC website and find out some information about the Nectar Cloud. We have a support site. Uh, and email to the help desk. So I guess the best approach if you want questions or any uh, anything about the cloud is to, is to flag a ticket with the help desk and you'll be directed to the relevant person to answer your question. Uh, and uh, you can just go to the Nectar dashboard and log in and start using it if you um, so wish. So that's it for me. Thanks very much. That's a sort of brief overview of the Nectar Cloud and how to use it.